so uh, there has been a, a, an event or um, several things have brought me to the point of being able to make certain changes and to actually make this video uh, today and uh, I was I was hesitant you know sometimes God speaks and we like to act as though we have not quite gotten what he, he has said because we are uncomfortable with the entirety of it all so we end up living up to only a portion of it right so the I had reservations about uh, personally being online uh, or like on YouTube as I'm going to be because of uh, several personal reasons but one of them is that you know you don't know who is going to stumble onto your onto your platform you know even people who I mean you're just open to anybody but then I remember this quote, uh, this saying that an author said, I don't know, I don't remember who, who it is, but I'm going to paraphrase. And he said that in Christ, we do not have the luxury or we don't get to keep our privacy, which is what uh, always, my whole life, I've always been very uh, guarded about my privacy, you know, just wanting to have that space that I call my own that I don't allow just anybody in but he says uh, in Christ we don't get to keep our privacy we are being poured out uh, like a drink offering you know it's it's your life but we don't get to have that same attachment that we had about our life uh, before we had given it to God and once our life belongs to God, then it means that it is not our own and it is for God to do with it as he pleases. So a while back, God told, I heard him say something that clearly made me understand that I was going to be on this platform, this whole YouTube platform. But because of those reasons, I just tried to make it into something else or I really didn't want to look at what he was trying to say. So this leads me to a small, a short story. I love stories because I feel like stories uh, are good teachers, like they are better teachers than we can ever be. So there is, there is this event or episode I would call it uh, last week actually. Um, and I was I was home alone basically, and I was in the bedroom. It was around past 11 uh, p.m. and I had my patio light on, and it's very it's very bright, so it it shines to quite an extensive uh, uh, distance, um, and. Luckily, I didn't have anything playing, so I could hear anything that was going on outside. So, as I was sitting, I had a voice. I, I mean, I had a sound, like a weird sound that I I, I wasn't used to, you know, because uh, I know the sounds that I get from, from my outside. But this one sounded, it sounded weird, like I hadn't had, had that sound before. So I heard it the first time. And I continued sitting and I said, let me finish what I'm doing and then I'm going to get up and, and go and see what it is. So I got up after a few minutes and when I looked outside, there was this man uh, who was outside my gate and I saw him walk to the gate and immediately just, I just lost it. Like I lost my confidence, I lost my peace because I had I had 
I had been afraid of this exact situation, just exactly how it was unfolding before me. I had, pers I had, I had imagined it exactly the way it was happening, and that was like now a fear that I had developed, a silent fear, like a quiet fear. You know, every time I was in bed and that light was on, I would pat my my curtains and check outside to see if there's anything going on. And the thing that I was dreading was exactly what I was seeing. So this man is walking to, towards my gate and he looks like he's stumbling, I don't know. And then I am over there. First I, I rushed to, to my bedroom to go and pick up uh, my phone. And I stood there just praying, please God, <laughs> please, please God, don't let him, uh, don't let him be able to open that gate and come in, because I know now, once he does that, I'm done for. I didn't even know what I was thinking was going to happen, but I just felt like that was the worst thing that could happen. So he bent down and he struggled with the latch, because you have to put your hand inside uh on the inside through an opening at the bottom and he struggled with it and then he wasn't able to open it but i stood there just watching and then he put his hand in again and tried again to open and this time he opened it so he opened the latch and pushed the gate open and came in and that was it i was just <laughs> Oh my God, I don't think I have trembled like that in now. Any time recently, like I haven't trembled. I haven't trembled like that, like I did that, that, that day <sighs> in a while. And once he got in, I realized he was drunk. Uh, you know, I don't even know what was going on in my head. I was just now full of fear. Um, then I started trying now calling people. I tried my closest neighbor, but they had switched off their phone because it's 11.30 and where I, where I live, people go to bed early. So she was, uh, she was, uh, she had her phone off. And then I tried the second person who is a bit far, uh, far off and then their, their phone was also off. I was like, my God. So... I called my friend, my friend Isaac, who I suspected lived uh, quite far away from from where I live. So that that was just like my desperate move. I mean, it was a long shot. So when I called him and he picked up, I asked him if there there, there are people um, down at the highway, who are motorbike guys, still at that time, and and he told me no. So I asked him where you live, your house, is it far from, from my house? So he also has a motorbike, he's a rider, and he told me, no, not really. So I told him, please, 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 please come and hurry. And he's trying to ask me what's going on, I'm, I'm telling him, just please, please hurry. So I'm, I'm just at my window checking whether this guy is going to come to my house because in the compound now where I live there is, there is two houses, mine and, and the other one. Now this guy had gone to the next house and the worst case scenario for me was for him to come to my door. I mean, that now was what I was dreading. So I stood by the window just checking to see he was not coming to my house. In a short while, like about uh, maybe eight minutes, uh, Isaac was here. <laughs> I was saved. <laughs> and then uh, I got out and then we went and found, oh, actually, yeah, indeed this guy was drunk. So he was uh, in the patio. I think what attracted th th this drunk was the light, first of all. So because where they go to, 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 to live, uh, I mean, their home is uh, quite far off and it's in the bush and then it's uphill and it's dark. So I guess when he came up to my house, he felt now he, he, he had a place where he can 
just sit and sleep sleep it off a little while and then he can go home so he was at the patio of the other house with, which has um like half walls so it was they were protecting him from from the wind and the elements so he was comfortable there there is light he, he was sleeping so Isaac came and 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 talked to him uh, luckily he knew who this guy was because it's a small town where where I live where basically everybody knows everybody and then he called him by his name you know this guy is so drunk he doesn't even and then he asked for water all I want is water all I want is water and then I'll go home I got him water and then as I was uh, I was go, uh, going to get the water. I'm telling Isaac uh, now what what has been happening, and he's telling me there is another guy at at the gate now, just outside the gate, and he's passed out. Uh, I was like, there there was two of them. I mean, if I had known there was two of them, I don't know what. I don't even know if I would have had the strength to to make those calls, because now. I would have thought I'm being, uh, uh, these are just burglars, you know. And I was, I knew I was alone, like, there was nobody close, in, close nearby to help me. So I was really shocked that it was two of them. This has never happened. In, in the long time that I've lived here, that has never happened. Um, so when we went to this guy who was, I, I gave this other one water, we went to this other guy I went to the gate and this guy is passed out on his, in his own vomit and it's like he's near dead like he, he doesn't even know where he is he can't even and I was asking Isaac you know what do you do in such a case what do you do because if we leave him out here it's very very cold he, this guy can even die uh, but he's trying to explain to me how these things work that he just needs to sleep it off and then he'll go home but I told him, you know, he suggested that I, uh, he told this guy who was passed out, uh, you know, the owner here is going to call cops on you, the cops on you, uh, if you don't get up. So this guy had that and immediately stood up and got up, I mean, stood up and, and started walking. And as he was walking, he was falling on the fence, like he was stumbling, seriously. And then he went into the bush. That's where he passed out again and slept. <sighs> this whole long story, uh, after I gave this other one water also, he left. So this whole story is uh, to lead us to, you know, before this, this, this moment came, on this particular day, um, I had been fighting a lot, like I had been uh, uh, juggling a lot. And then on this particular day, um, it all just came crashing. Like, um, you remember uh, the story of Elijah when uh, he had dealt with these uh, Baal, Baal gods and the prophets, and then he got this threat from from this woman, this queen. And it's like this same guy who had been doing miracles and doing great things, had received such great victory, was now wishing that he could die. And in that that day, that that's exactly what had happened to me. I mean like I had been winning through the through the week. I had been doing really, really well. But then on this particular day, it's like my eyes were opened to the fact that I was doing very unnatural things. Like when Peter was walking on water, and I believe that what caused him to start fearing and to start sinking was his eyes were opened and, and he saw that he was actually walking on water. You know, men don't walk on water. So when his eyes were opened and he saw what he was doing, just fear crept in. And he started to sink, and that's what happened to me because I was doing so well. And then on this particular day, I just felt like it was too much for me. And yet I had been doing it before. 
but then now all of a sudden it was too much because my eyes were opened i just lost sight of what i was focusing on and i asked god like i felt like i was on the edge and i when i prayed i asked god please please send somebody please please send somebody and it's amazing how god sends help you know ah uh, uh, cuz one of the things that had brought me to this edge was i started to wonder what I, i was doing like i wasn't seeing the actual fruit of of what i, I was doing spiritually i could feel in my soul and in my spirit i could feel i was doing a lot of work um i was making a lot of progress but then i my eyes were just open to the fact that i had nothing to show for it and i asked god please please send send somebody so in this whole uh turn of events uh isaac ended up sitting with me in the house for a couple of hours until about 3 p.m. so that we could make sure that the guys had slept whatever they had drunk off and they had left and gone home so he sat with me and we talked and that was like that was like uh uh cathartic for me um and then when he left usually for me when i stay up past 2 p.m. um 2 a.m. sorry when i stay up at 2 a.m. Uh, i'm not able to fall back to sleep i mean it would be very very difficult to get back to sleep so i decided instead of going to bed and sh- struggling to to go to fall asleep uh and i was not going to i was just going to lay there until morning i decided to sort of like uh uh we do a night video on my own like just stay up until morning and i started praying and worshiping and uh meditating and that is actually when uh that is actually when i would say my eyes were opened to realize what i was supposed to be doing on youtube you know i don't want to go into the whole details of what let me there because uh you know that whole intimacy uh, intimate moment between us and god where he impresses things on us that we can't quite describe to somebody else to tell them that this is actually how god spoke to me sometimes he speaks audibly like in the first time he told me to get on youtube and that was audible but this time it was like now the whole the whole um veil that was covering up this thing for me was lifted and all i needed to do now is to just accept because clearly i, d- I didn't want to face the uh, the reality of of what really god wanted me to do and in truth if i were to be honest i i love the whole idea it's just that that, that other part of being vulnerable and exposed like feeling like I'm being exposed that I I don't like but that is just my own human perception you know I don't I'm not supposed to have that when it comes to to faith and that is how we are supposed to to live so I guess what I needed to to just put out there is this and then we all can take from it what we will i don't want to start defining it for anybody or anything like that uh we just have to allow god to show forth uh in things for people uh by the spirit and not by us trying to reason things out i can't say uh uh like i i can't give specific reasons and you know uh meaning for everything that i've just said but i just felt like i needed to share that and that it's what brought me here in this moment right now because i felt like now that would be important to document and to capture that this is how i came here and i guess time will tell if, if that is true or not and even if it's not um we live and learn and we uh as long as our hearts are in the right place god allows us to you know god allows us errors and he causes all things to work together for our good in the end 
Uh, so with that, I will leave you, bid you adieu, and uh, God bless you.